And in this volatile market, should you buy gold as a defense or a hedge against inflation? That's what we're talking about. It seems as though there's a reason to buy when stocks are rising or when they're falling. But gold prices have stayed relatively steady in recent months. So when should you buy gold and when should you sell? George Giro, Senior Vice President at RBC Capital Market, says gold is a defense against loss of purchasing power. He joins us now with his thoughts on successfully trading gold. And we certainly need them. Thanks for being here. And thank you for having me. I think it's very important, very interesting to look at gold as a different sort of an asset class than most people have looked at it. Because I remember last year when we had the stock market really... Um, pushing down, 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 gold also went down, 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 because, of course, money managers, when they have to raise cash, they sell everything. And people uh, said, gee, how come gold isn't going back up when the stock market is down uh, triple digits? Some buy it as a defense. Some buy it as a hedge against inflation. And those two opinions are contradictory. So how do you know when well, to buy and really when to sell? they aren't contradictory. Okay. Because the bottom line is maintaining your purchasing power. Back in the uh, Depression days, we always talk about the Depression these days, a kilo of gold bought you a new Ford, Chevy, or Plymouth, and guess what? Today they do the same thing, except the names of the cars are a little bit different. They certainly are. And we also have Bloomberg's Michael Whitney here with us. He used to trade gold and had a little difficulty with it, right, Michael, over the past year? Oh, certainly. I mean, last year I was talking to George a little bit before he came on, and it was quite difficult to trade gold, lots of false breakouts. I mean, when should the, the investor who wants to have allocation of gold, should they try to time the market or should they just close their eyes and buy it? Well, neither. I think what you need to do is decide how much gold you really want to have in asset allocation in your portfolio to maintain some purchasing power. And, and the experts all say somewhere around 5%. And then when do you buy that? Well, you buy that each time you have a major sell-off in gold. And that seems to have always worked out. If you look at a long-term chart on gold, you'll find that all the big down moves, the breaks, were really the buying opportunities. So 5%, is that inclusive of a broader allocation of commodities, or do you think 5% gold is a nice weighting to have in a portfolio? Oh, I believe in 5% gold, because all the other metals all have different purposes. Now, copper has its own purpose, uh, recovery in industrials, uh, shovel-ready stuff, uh, all the tarp money hitting at the end, um, the infrastructure needs if all the storms hit in the fall. That's copper. On the other hand, uh, copper was hurt by housing starts in the last couple of days, so that sold off. Then you have silver, sort of a companion to gold, but it's part industrial. And they seem to keep finding more and more silver in, in Peru, uh, in Mexico, and, um, and of course elsewhere. So um, all the copper mines also mine silver. What about a U.S. dollar rally? Could that squelch gold? I think a U.S. dollar rally would probably put gold prices down. And now, will we have a U.S. dollar rally? That I don't know. It depends on a lot of different things. But that's one of the things uh, the world is looking at. This isn't just a U.S. phenomena. It's the world that's looking at uh, the U.S. dollar. Uh, will it maintain its reserve currency status? Uh, will it continue uh, to hold this 140, 142 uh, trading range? And that's very important, not just in Europe, or South America, but in North America. Michael, why was gold hard for you to trade over the past year? Well, uh, Gigi, I found it really difficult because of the false breakouts. Following the technical signals, very difficult in a market which has so many diverse and different participants. You'd buy it on the breakouts, and then it would just set back. I liked the story. I saw that they were debasing the dollar by printing money, more or less. I thought that there was a, a broader move in second-tier banks to buy gold as a reserve and to sell dollar-based assets. I liked the story. I was a believer, and it was just hard to trade. Every time I bought it, it would sell off, and it just would shatter my confidence and my ability to analyze the market correctly. So what advice do you have? Well, I think probably gold, is, it can be traded, but you have to be nimble. And you have to be extremely nimble because there are many momentum traders, funds with computers and headline traders that cause these breakouts and breakdowns that are uh, usually only one or two days. Um, and, and then, therefore, you have a major turnaround up or down after that because after people uh, sell it, they find something new in the news and it goes right back up. And the world picture is confus confusing. Demand is down in the Far East in India, up in North America and Europe. What are the factors that drive this, and how do well, you reconcile that? This is very interesting. Uh, the, 
gold industry in the United States, uh, say in the Rhode Island, uh, the jewelry industry, they lease gold. They really don't buy gold. And then, of course, you have India and you have the Far East. Uh, the high China, price of, the massive and, consumer? Well, China is now producing uh, gold and silver. And so you have um, a custom and a culture that's totally changed looking at gold. So what can, how do you trade based on that? Well, you don't really trade. You, you're supposed to find these buying opportunities and buy some each time and just kind of buy and hold. I mean, you buy insurance for your car and you hope you never have to use it. And this is sort of like gold should be in the portfolio uh, for long term just in case things don't work out with the currency that you live with. And with consolidation and coiling action in gold, do you see a big move coming in September? It, it, September is going to be a very tough time for gold. You have the ECB, again, trying to put together 500 tons of gold for sale uh, for their member banks. Last year, they didn't all sell. Uh, then you have uh, 403 tons that the IMF uh, has been talking to Congress about selling, and that hasn't been resolved. So September, fasten your seatbelt. It could be very volatile again, and look for the opportunities. We certainly will. George Giro, thanks for joining us from RBC Capital Thank Markets. Thank you.